FBI's latest and the National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi has ruled in a very major decision that the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020 also known as the BBI Bill cannot be amended in, in Parliament and has to be debated as is. Let's listen. Amended at this point. Do you then make it amenable to amendment, back, take it back to the county assemblies to go and because you will have changed the text, you will have changed the intentions of the promoters. Because it's a popular initiative, you cannot then, you cannot, it is not tenable. It is illogical to, to entertain a view that parliament can amend it uh, during its consideration. All right, that is uh, the National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi in that uh, uh, decision, that ruling earlier today, a ruling that was expected uh, to have an impact in the BBI um, conversation. I'm joined tonight in, in, on Newsline by Senator Fonyamira, and who is also the chairman of the Senate's Justice, Legal Affairs and Human Rights Committee, uh, Mwishmi Okongo Omogeni, will be joining us via Zoom. We also joined by development and humanitarian consultants and a member of the Linda Katiba group which is opposed to the BBI uh, uh, process clamor for constitutional change, Chero Tichsei. And also joining me tonight here on Newsline is nominated member of parliament who is also a member of the National Assembly's Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, Jennifer Shamala. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me tonight. Um, I want to begin with you, uh, Senator Okongo Mogeni, uh, if I can. Uh, Let's begin with the, the ruling by uh, the National Assembly Speaker. Um, does it have any different impact to what uh, this conversation, uh, what turn this conversation will take going forward? Uh, thank you, Kichili. It's uh, nice being on the show. And uh, um, I first want to really appreciate the fact that you have uh, deemed it fit to call me to uh, join viewers this evening. Uh, I've uh, I, I listened to the ruling by the Speaker of uh, the National Assembly, and I think the implication is that uh, uh, for the National Assembly, it's now game shot. Uh, the Speaker has ruled that uh, any bill brought to the House through a popular initiative under Article 257 will not be subjected to any amendments uh, on the floor of the House. I think what uh, remains now is uh, the kind of ruling that will be delivered on uh, Thursday uh, by the Speaker of uh, the Senate. But uh, could you remember that uh, unlike uh, the National Assembly, where we do not have any uh, errors uh, on the face of the bills uh, that are being processed by the two houses, uh, the situation is a bit different at the Senate because we have uh, some uh, clauses of uh, the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020 that as uh, errors. Uh, you remember that uh, when we presented our report, the joint report to the two houses, we pointed out that uh, the bill that was uh, presented before the Senate was uh, different in some uh, uh, clauses right. from the bill that was uh, before the National Assembly. So we expect that uh, the Speaker of the Senate will uh, give directive whether, as you had uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly pronounced today, whether it will allow uh, the Senate to uh, do amendments that will correct uh, some errors of form and not of substance that will change the content of uh, the bill as promoted by uh, the promoters. Uh, therefore, uh, for the Senate, the situation may be a bit, uh, you know, different because we must deal with that error on right. Clause 13B right. okay. and the error that is on uh, the first schedule, uh, Clause 1, the uh, sub-Clause 1, where there is reference to Article 877, while the bill that is before the National Assembly makes a reference to okay. Clause 89, sub-Article 7, this, which is Senator. the correct clause. Let, yeah. let, me, let me ask you this. You have, you have been very close to this process. You have chaired that, uh, you have co-chaired that joint committee. Um, do you expect a similar ruling? Because uh, there has been some noise from, from the Senate as well as from the National Assembly from some, from some quarters about some of the provisions. Um, even, 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 even as, as, as late as, 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 as recently, uh, some senators, uh, you know, tearing into, into, into some provisions and wanting 
some of them to be amended. Do you expect a similar ruling from your speaker? I, I wouldn't call it uh, noise. I, I think uh, there has been a robust debate uh, on the floor of the Senate right. uh, with a number of senators uh, advocating the view that uh, they are mandated uh, to legislate under Article 93 and Article 109 of uh, the Constitution as read with the provisions of Article 257. Uh, I think you had Senator Wetangula makes uh, very strong submissions on the floor today does not expressly bar them from moving amendments on uh, a bill that uh, reaches the House through Article 257. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to anticipate uh, the ruling that will be delivered by the Speaker of the Senate, but as I've uh, pointed out to you, our situation is uh, a bit different because the bill that is before us has uh, some errors, and unlike the bill before the National Assembly. Uh, that did not have uh, any errors. You know, 32 county assemblies sent to us, uh, you know, the House of the Senate, uh, a bill that uh, had errors, but yes. the National Assembly received uh, 47 copies, I presume, from the, the county assemblies that did not have any errors. So I think as he makes his uh, ruling tomorrow, he must uh, see how to go around uh, uh, the fact that uh, the bill that is before us needs some cleanup and, and I think the best way to do the cleanup is to allow some amendment that right. which will not go to the substance. It, it will be a correction of form, okay. uh, so to speak. And I think okay. if you read the report, and uh, this was repeated by the Speaker of uh, National Assembly, he said, and, and I'm actually quoting him, that any amendment of form uh, does not go contrary to the provisions of Article 257. What I think he said is that you cannot amend a bill under 257 to defeat the intention of, of uh, Wanjiku, who is the promoter of the bill. All right. Senator Tisha, let me come to you. Um, you are opposed to this process. Uh, that is uh, a matter of public record. Um, the Speaker of the National Assembly in his ruling today uh, said that the BBI uh, process is before Parliament um, correctly or properly. Um, what is your view on this? We know we have several petitions, court petitions, stopping a referendum. But what is your view on, on this ruling by, by Speaker Mutui? Thank you, Ben, and good evening. It's good to, to be with you all again this evening. You know, I listened quite carefully to the Speaker of the National Assembly this afternoon, and of course what caught my attention was the area of unconstitutional constitutional amendments. And of course that speaks to uh, some of the consolidated matters that are before the five-judge bench. What I'd like to say, though, about the Speaker is, is he was very measured in his response. And I don't think uh, there was any way that there'd be a ruling in favor of uh, the, the House um, uh, amending the bill because then it would take it straight out of the realm of a popular initiative and into a parliamentary initiative. So I think it was inevitable uh, that there would be the ruling that there'd be no um, amendment in the House. But what I found quite interesting, Ben, um, in addition to the very substantive issues that were raised by the JLAC, uh, whether it was a 70 constituencies or judicial independence, and broader issues around uh, the National Police Service Commission, the remuneration salaries and remuneration commission, and so on and so forth, I found it very interesting that one of the ways that uh, we as the people of Kenya are being told that this referendum is happening, whether we like it or not, is this well-trotted out issue of public participation. And um, I, I, I thought back, Ben, to the very beginning when the BBI was proposed and they went out and gathered views from all the 47 counties. There was this strong element of public participation, which was then, I suppose, obliterated and obfuscated into this thing called the, the, the bill, uh, where you don't know how public participation disappeared somewhere between gathering of the views and the development of the bill. Now here we are 
being told that county assemblies have uh, returned valid certificates. The issue of public participation is no, no longer in question, although that is one of the things we're asking. Um, and, and now when we are being told that there's only one way to go, which is to the people, so that we, the people, can decide, there'll again be the issue of public participation. And I was quite curious to hear uh, the speaker speak to the issues of qualitative participation, not necessarily quantitative. What does that mean? If we the people, all X number of million of us, are to come out and say we support the BBI or not when we go to the referendum because we have been told effectively this is inevitable, how are we going to confirm that right. public participation in a qualified manner has taken place? We don't have access to the bill as it is, even as the senator was saying, there is a Senate issue of the bill that they're reading there and the bill that's in the National Assembly. Are we looking at two bills. Maybe those who are legislators can, can explain this better to us. But it's this whole banding around of public so, so, participation. So you have a problem we with, the people, with the, certification. With the public yes. participation yes, bit of it. Does that mean that you have, are disagreeing on, with the speaker when he says that so, the bill is properly before the House? Very quickly. No, no, no. He's, he has answered all his questions. He raised the four substantive issues, went into great detail, and explained how each and every one was covered. And even when it was contentious, okay. for example, he said, we'll leave it to the courts to decide. And even the issue of whether the president can sign or whether IBC is free to run the referendum, he said that has no impact on the parliament, which is absolutely true. So he ticked all the boxes. But as I said, what did we expect him to do to undo right. it? and okay. to begin to sabotage what I call has been the Trojan horse process from the very beginning? Not at all. But I have still got my very serious reservations and I've always been on the record as saying public participation has not happened. And I'm also on the record as saying that this is not the time to be looking at a constitutional amendment process, which in my opinion, which right. we will let the courts give us advice on and feedback on, is a repeal process. All right. We'll let uh, the, uh, the other panelists uh, say something on that. But let me, let me come to you, Mashima Shamala. Um, the ruling, some, some, some people would have expected uh, a different ruling by the National Assembly Speaker. Would such a ruling have uh, stopped reggae, so to speak? I think it's, um, the, the question was, and I would like to be able to, to comment on that, was um, the specific issue on whether Parliament, National Assembly or Senate can affect amendments. Now, I want to make something um, a, a bit very clear, is that there are no errors with regards to any, um, to re with regards to amendments. We have to be very clear that the errors, yes, were of form and they were typographical errors. Now, nothing could have been easier for the people of Kenya when they promulgated the Constitution of 2010 to have put it in the articles 256 and 257 that a popular initiative could be amended by Parliament. There is the article on uh, initiative by Parliament and there is an article on the popular initiative. Having stated that, I want to further um, um, go ahead and state and talk about the fact that there was, there's this issue of public participation. The ultimate uh, the ultimate judge on public participation are the people of Kenya. And um, it was subjected to public participation. I have told you myself that as a member of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, we took on board the, 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 um, the views of the, of the groups and the people that appeared before us. Right. And the report is extremely comprehensive of who came, what the people said. So um, I think it's an excellent document. Um, the, the, the Speaker of the National Assembly actually, get, um, with, you know, with utmost humility, glowing tribute to this joint committee that was headed by Senator Ogmageni and the Chair of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, Muturi Kigano. So I would advise people, it's available online and there any, any error has nothing to do with whether we are going to have allow or permit amendments within in the National Assembly or in the Senate. The errors are really minor errors and, and they're really about form and not substance. All right. Uh, Senator Morgani, 
uh, Chair Utrich has, has, has raised queries of um, constitutional issues uh, and also citing um, the petitions that, have, uh, that are in court stopping a referendum. What do you say to that? Yeah, I think uh, as uh, my colleague Shamal has uh, stated, uh, we deliberated at length uh, what the committee called uh, unconstitutional constitutional amendments. Right. And, uh, you know, the committee was uh, unanimous right. that uh, uh, there may be instances where uh, proposed amendments to the constitution may be deemed to be unconstitutional. And uh, we, we were given example that examples that uh, in, in some countries um, out there, like uh, Switzerland, uh, they have given leeway to parliament to, uh, you know, uh, have uh, power to deal with such clauses if they find their way uh, to parliament through a uh, popular initiative. But uh, in the Kenyan situation, it seems like the drafters of the 2010 constitution were fairly mean and they did not expressly give that power to, to parliament. So uh, it is still a debate whether parliament has got powers to do any intervention under Article 257. Right. And I think the best thing to do in, in a situation where there is lack of clarity in any article of the constitution is to seek an interpretation from our courts. And you know, Kitili, if you follow the history of the relationship between uh, the National Assembly and the Senate, we have gone uh, twice uh, to the Supreme Court to seek uh, clarity on interpretation of uh, a number of articles uh, in the Constitution. Uh, last year, uh, part one, we, we were before the High Court uh, seeking some interpretation on, on uh, Article 110 of the Constitution, and we got an interpretation from the High Court. So I think what I like to tell uh, Sehi is that, uh, you know, these are democratic country and uh, nobody can stop uh, any Kenyan from going to court to, uh, to seek an interpretation from the, the, the judiciary. And I think all these issues they have raised, maybe on the process, on the, uh, you know, some uh, proposed amendments being unconstitutional. I would, as a lawyer, I would say that uh, as, as a person who respects uh, a rule of law, uh, as, as a senior counsel in this country, I will respect any decision that comes away from uh, the High Court. And our experts were very clear. Shamala will tell you that uh, they did tell us mm -hmm. that what we are unable to do, uh, maybe the High Court can step in uh, to, to give an interpretation that uh, should bind all of us. Because, the, you know, the court remains the final arbiter. On, on situations where we are unable to, to agree. So I want to really uh, tell uh, Sehi that uh, I don't think anybody will take issue with Kenyans who have gone to court to seek uh, a clarification on a number of issues. And I really hope that uh, the High Court will create some clarity on these uh, matters so that if we were to do such an amendment in the future, uh, then the law will uh, be very clear. There will be no ambiguity. As we speak now, Really, there's a lot of ambiguity, even just to make a, a decision on what is a popular initiative by the people of Kenya vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, an initiative that is supported by executive, remains a very, very gray area. All right. In your learned view, uh, Senator Omogeni, would you say the issues that those Kenyans went to court with, uh, how, how, how weighty would you say they are? And how confident are you uh, as a proponent of this uh, process that... Kenyans will indeed go for, for a plebiscite. Kitili, Kitili, they are weighty. I will give you an example. You know, if you read uh, the American Constitution, you you will not you will not get anywhere where courts uh, in uh, America, especially the Supreme Court, has been given uh, powers to uh, you know have judicial review. And judicial review is basically to review uh, decisions that are made by the executive. But there is a celebrated case of uh, Marbury versus Madison that was decided by Chief Justice Marshall. And uh, Chief Justice Marshall made, make a, made an interpretation in a manner uh, that gave courts jurisdiction to review decisions that are made by the executive. Right. When you look at uh, you know, all the petitions uh, pending before yeah. court, uh, there are Kenyans who want to see clarity. They want to understand when you say that Kenyans can uh, invoke Article 257 
and initiate a popular amendment of the constitution? Should a government have uh, any input? So that's, I think to me, uh, that's a cardinal uh, issue of law that needs to be clarified. They're asking uh, issues of uh, public participation, you know? When, when you say that Kenyans have uh, engaged in pu public participation, how qualitative should that public participation, what should be the, the impact, to what extent should we uh, involve the people? When you send bills to, to county assemblies, uh, what, uh, how extensive uh, should the county assemblies uh, involve uh, the people they represent before the county assemblies are able to cast right. uh, their vote? Mm -hmm. If there are provisions, and I mean, I think those are the issues. I'm not saying that is the situation, but some Kenyans are saying that there are some proposed amendments that go to the foundation of, of our constitution. What, what is the view of the court? Some are even making a preposition that what we are doing, I think that's one of the issues I saw in one of the cases when we were going through them as a committee. Uh, some Kenyans are even saying that uh, when you are talking about amending a constitution, uh, you cannot amend over 50, you can't make amendments touching over 50 clauses or clause, 50 articles and call it an amendment. They think that is an overhaul of, of a constitution or rather a repealing. So I really, me, I'm happy that these cases are there because we we'll put these issues to rest so that if in another two years time, yes. we want to, you know, uh, again, invoke Article 257 in amending the constitution, right. those matters would have been settled by our courts of law and there will be no guess, guess what, you know, we'll all proceed knowing that this is what the law is and this is how clear the position has been put to rest by our courts. All right. Terutich, what exactly are you expecting from the courts on these petitions? Well, we are, we are waiting, uh, Ben, for the courts uh, to rule, but Senator Mogheny captured them, uh, the, the issues uh, very, very well. Uh, there is one aspect, though, which is not part of the consolidated five-judge uh, bench, which I think is also important to note. The Supreme Court ruling of 2015 around the diaspora vote uh, that upheld the Court of Appeals' um, uh, decision on diaspora voting. We're looking at an IEBC right now that is fragmented, that is weakened on so many levels. Uh, that has not also um, uh, uh, done its bit in terms of ensuring that the diaspora is registered to vote. So even if the judges um, uh, pronounce themselves, the five-judge bench on these matters, the eight consolidated matters, there's some extremely serious uh, matters, even if we were to go to the plebiscite and any future um, election, how on earth are we going to ensure that we are constitutionally um, in order when we can hold elections, for example, without the diaspora voting. But I completely agree with Senator Omogeny. And for uh, me, coming in from the, the, the perspective of the basic structure doctrine, it's very important to have judges pronounce themselves on these uh, matters so that we can have something to refer to in future. Issues of sunset clauses, a two-thirds gender principle. When does an amendment become a repeal process? All of these things. We we need to hear back on because these gray areas are the gray areas and the loopholes that have been exploited in the formation of the bill. And you know, Ben, one of the things that really worries me is how much time we have given to this. We talk about we the people, we the people will decide, we will go to a plebiscite. We the people right now have no food, no jobs, no education. You know, we are struggling, we are drowning in debt, we are in free fall. Is this exactly what the people? People of Kenya need right now and this is where I speak to some of the dishonesty that I see when it comes to our duty bearers who are insisting that this is the one and main and only thing that the people of Kenya need right now this is not the time for constitutional amendments repeal processes and so on this is a time to take stock this is a time for our duty bearers to take care of the people who voted them into power and look at the things that are most pressing the COVID pandemic the rampant corruption the failure of the big four to deliver all of these issues ben we are here floundering lakini we have been told chamuhimu ni bbi and referendum we will go to and where the speaker is not able to pronounce himself he says we shall return to the people and there's so many gray areas and ultimately for me as i've always said and history will bear us out this is not about 
about Wanjiko. This is about the continued hegemony of one or two or three families in this country and, and scaring us with issues of tribal animosity and hostility and ethnicity and how BBI is going to cure all of that. When in actual fact, the one and only existential threat facing Kenya is electoral injustice. And these go, this goes back to issues of IEBC. It goes back to how it is that people understand their vote to be stolen or not. So even, Ben, when we say we're going back to the referendum or we're going forward into a referendum, how will I know that my no will count? or my yes will count. These are the issues we need to ask ourselves. Right. And, and, and as, we, as we delve deeper, ultimately for me, I feel that the legislators have failed the people of Kenya. And it's ironic that we have an unconstitutional parliament uh, trying to look to see how to protect and defend and enhance the constitution. If they're not even able to enact legislation around the two thirds gender rule, how on earth will they do all these things they've set out to say will, will eventually happen via the bill? Right. That is a loaded statement. Uh, Shamala, what do you think about that? And the Kenyans, a lot of them that are here, saying that the BBI is not, should not be priority for this country. There is a hashtag that, uh, that trends on, on Twitter, uh, BBI and nonsense. I mean, uh, can you ignore such? I mean, Twitter is not where things are determined. I, I think we overrate Twitter. If Twitter was the place where things are determined, um, a lot of these um, people would have been elected into parliament. They run, they don't make it, and the campaigns are done on Twitter. So, and, and that's not where it's determined. What is important is, I think that there is no bigger public participation, no bigger um, a, a, a stamp on the BBI than the one million signatures that were appended to and, and sent to IEBC. Now, if you consider one million people, not a lot of people, then I, I really don't know what is, yes? Having said that, and indeed, the representatives of these people are at the county level and at the national level. And the counties and the MCAs, the, the members of the county assemblies, are the elected representatives of the people of Kenya. And they returned these valid certificates, it was addressed by the Honorable Speaker. They are the representatives of Wanjiko. So to rubbish these one million signatures and to say that they, uh, they don't want it, that they are more pressing issues, I will tell you what the people of Kenya have said and what the people of Kenya have wanted. They are so tired of the cyclical violence that has occurred in this country since the advent of multi-party democracy. They were told that with multi-party democracy, all will be well. But from 1992 up until 2017, we have had, except for two elections, violence break out in this country. And it is for that reason, and as I stated in Parliament today, that they have said, actually, this form of democracy may not work for us, and maybe we need to have what is called a consociational democracy. Consociational democracies exist in other parts of the world, and hence we cannot deal with a winner-take-it-all situation. One million people appended their signatures and told us that this is what they want. It is not two or three or four people one million people and if you trash those one million people then I don't know what else you can trash in this country because we have to respect the sovereign will of the people of this country because that and when they and the ultimate ultimate decision will be made by them if and when we go to the referendum what about the prioritization of it all among the other issues it's that a, affect Kenya? when a country has had an election like we did in 2017 and lost trillions of shillings and trillions of jobs from the cycle of violence, it becomes an extreme priority that as a nation, before we go to the next election, we cannot continue with this cyclical violence. It just cannot happen. That is the priority. Because ultimately, for us to thrive as Kenyans, to be able to, be, to invest, for investors to come into this country, for us to be able to work, for us to keep the economy going, we have to ensure, first and foremost, peace and stability. It's the foundation of a secure nation. All right. Senator Morgan, I, I want us to get into some of the issues that have been raised by those who, are say, who say they 
support the BBI, but they want some, some things changed. But before that, for, for my sake and the sake of my viewers, I, I would like to, to, to get your view uh, on, 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 by, on this view by Kenyans who say that the BBI is, is not priority uh, for this country. Okay, um, Kitili, I, I understand where Kenyans are coming from. Uh, I represent a rural county called uh, Nyamira. I was there over the weekend, you know, uh, from Friday all through to Monday, and I can see the suffering that uh, Kenyans are going through. Uh, I can see the, the poor returns from uh, agriculture. The, I saw the cry of, of uh, tea farmers, uh, can see the cry of uh, coffee farmers. I can see the unemployment uh, uh, within uh, the, the youths. I, I, can, I can see the suckings that have been precipitated by the COVID crisis. So I really hear uh, where Kenyans are coming from. And, and I, I cannot blame uh, Sehi for the anger she has, uh, uh, even against us as uh, elected representatives of the people. I hear, and I think uh, for me, it's good that we have, uh, it's always a good thing to have a strong civil society. So when we have the likes of Sehi, uh, that must always uh, keep us on our toes. It, it's a good thing. In fact, uh, if you go to countries like the uh, US, uh, lobbyists, uh, civil society, are uh, very key lobbyists uh, in, in legislation. They're always there taking uh, representatives and senators to task. So I think she, she's doing a good job and, and we cannot take it against her. But then you see, Kitili, um, when you talk about priority, as Senator for Yamira, I never initiated uh, this bill. This is a popular initiative under Article 257. Yes. I was just given a task as a chair of Justice Legal Human Rights uh, Committee and they told that uh, three point something plus Kenyans have signed you know, a, a petition through a bill that was as promoters and uh, they want to amend the following articles of the Constitution. Right. Now, if you read that, the Constitution in Article 257, I have, I have really no much role to play. I cannot go back to these three million Kenyans and tell them, take back your, your bill, uh, this is not a priority. So the irony is that it is the same Kenyans who have made a request to us that they want the Constitution to be amended. Now, we are helpless. You, you, have, you have heard, we have even been told we can't, the ruling that was delivered today says that we cannot amend anything. So I, I really want to urge Kenyans not to take it on us, yet this is their baby. We are being told that you cannot interfere with this bill because this is Mwanainchi's bill. So really, it's not us to blame that we have given this priority. Uh, it is the Kenyans who have uh, taken us through this uh, uh, process of saying they want to amend uh, the constitution of, of Kenya. So this should be very clear, Kitiri, uh, to the people of Kenya, that uh, if I was to do an amendment under Article 256, yes. then you can yes. take it against me that I'm trying to amend the constitution mm -hmm. at the wrong time. But when it's the people pushing me to process it for them through parliament, honestly, I cannot take blame. All right. It is a... It is a it is a, 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 a process by the people, Mwashima Mogani, but of course uh, it is the political class that has mainly be, been pushing this uh, since last year. And, and you say correctly, it came from the people, but there seems to be two kinds of Kenyans. What do you, what do you say to Morai Nyamira, who is opposed to this process right now, uh, yeah. for, for her to be you know, content? I, I, yeah, I want to tell Mora that uh, you have placed me in an awkward situation because it's you who appended uh, three million signatures. If, if Kenyans had stayed away and said this is not a priority for us, we were not going to sign these signatures, we are not for this amendment. Because if you read the Constitution, uh, the supremacy, Article 1, the supremacy is, is with the people of Kenya. <laughs> so we are not supreme, the, is the people are supreme as we are on the second layer. So if, if Mora in Yamira and Kwamboka uh, had said no, I'm not going to append the signatures to this bill. There's no way, even if it's the government, they could have raised the one, uh, not even one million, the three plus uh, million uh, uh, signatures. You know, so it is ultimately, is the common one inch who made the decision that this bill must uh, go forward. All right. Thanks for that.
I want us to very quickly take a look at some of the sticking points that we have been hearing time and time again, even as Kenyans wait to uh, find out what the Senate will do on Thursday. And uh, earlier today, the Orange Democratic Movement, ODM, um, did uh, the whip uh, one of its uh, members, one of its more vocal members on this BBI issue, Rarieda Member of Parliament, uh, Otiende Amolo, removed as a member and chairperson of the National Assembly's um, Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, replaced uh, with the Roraka Member of Parliament, Tom Kajuang, uh, seen as uh, punishment for, for, for dissent. Let's listen in. Number eight, the Honorable Francis Tom Joseph Kajuang, MP, to be appointed to the Departmental Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs to replace the Honorable Otiende Amolo, MP. Honorable Speaker, these names were approved by the Selection Committee in its sittings yesterday. The names have been proposed by the political parties and the political coalitions um, the, we have made uh, some changes in the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, again to align it with the aspirations and requests and uh, the aspirations of the ODM and other coalition. Uh, Tom Joseph Kajuang is joining. He may not be a professor in law, but is the people's chief justice. And so is well versed in legal matters, and I wish him well in that committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I second. All right. I want to, to get your quick uh, reactions to that before we get into the, some of those sticking points. Uh, Moshima Shamala, let me come to you. Um, Otiende Amolo and the uh, CR Senator James Orengo have been uh, one of the more vocal MPs who are supporting the BBI bill, but have been pushing for amendments to the BBI before it can be taken to the people. And you told me a few weeks that there was no dissent or such uh, robust uh, views from, from your committee, the Justice and Legal Com uh, Affairs Committee, but we are seeing this today. What, what, are, what is your initial reaction to this? Um, there still remains no dissent in the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, and um, a few weeks ago was a few weeks ago, and a lot can happen in a minute, in a day, in a week. Having said that, um, the, ish the, the de whipping of Honorable Otende Amolo, who is the Vice Chairman of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, and of which I also sit on, and we did have, and we continue to have, and he's also a, a, a senior counsel, an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, so also my colleague, and we have always gotten on very, very well. Having stated that, the party, I'm not a member of the ODM or the NASA coalition. I'm yes. a member of the Jubilee Party. I heard Honorable Badi stating that they wanted a person that is in tune with their aspirations. Now, these are internal decisions that are made within the party, and this came in a supplementary um, order paper this afternoon, and we became aware of it at that time. So I'm not really in a position to answer. I don't know the... the uh, what are the issues? Why Honorable? I saw a very cryptic text from Honorable Otende Molo uh, in late morning, and I have just and I heard Honorable Badi say on the floor of the House today that the as that the Honorable Kajang is more in tune with the aspirations of NASA and of the ODM party. All right. Do you think he was removed because he was critical of the BBI bill? Uh, he was not, uh, Honorable Otende Molo was not critical of the BBI bill. Honorable Otende Molo uh, took a divergent view. You remember I signed a minority report, um, the one of uh, Honorable Sakaja. However, having said that, he was not, I don't understand which different view did he take. Um, we worked very well as a committee. Well, he, want, he wanted the bill opened and amended before it can go to, to, to a referendum. That's an, taking, having views doesn't mean be, you will be, it's, they're divergent. You can have views, you can have this, um, you, can, you can agree to disagree, 
and um, then you are persuaded. You s talk to each other, and that is the reason you have a deba you right. debate in Parliament, mm -hmm. for one to be able to persuade the other side. All right. Charotic, um, the ODM um, chairman, John Buddy, says that the changes were made to align uh, the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee with the aspirations of the ODM party. What are your thoughts on, on this de-whipping? You know, Ben, I have been thinking a lot about the theme of, of tolerance uh, when it comes to the ironically named uh, Building Bridges initiative uh, to a united Kenya. And uh, for those of us who are not legislators who are sitting on the outside, we have seen the, the bullying, the belligerence, the intolerance. In fact, we've never seen such movement uh, and, and shaking within, within political parties, uh, primarily due to this uh, BBI uh, process. And I feel like the BBI process is being used by political parties as, shall I say, the big stick with which to hit errant uh, members, whether they are long-term errant uh, members or recent errant members. In the early days, we used to see a lot of that movement within uh, Jubilee, the Tanga Tanga versus the Kieleweke faction and so on, and we saw a lot of de-whipping and removal and reshuffling and expulsion and so on and so forth. And very unfortunately, it seems as though ODM has squarely positioned itself also within that space where this ability, I saw someone throwing a, a chair at a helicopter over the weekend when when, when Senator Orengo and, and Honorable Otende Amolo were, were in, um, in Nyanza. And I was quite amazed. And I said, this is building bridges? This is the building bridges where if Cherotich raises a dissenting voice and I'm, uh, I hold a particular position within a political party, I'll be told my views are no longer aligned, but I'm actually being hit with a big stick. So is this about party politics? Is this about dynasty politics? What is this power play? Because wherever I look, I do not see Wanjiko. Wherever I look, all this love and unity and tolerance and respect and a wonderful, beautiful Kenya for all of us is not in any any way, shape or form being exemplified by the way we are seeing party politics unfold. And is the BBI process really for political parties or is it for the people of Kenya? So I can only look with regret and say this is the example that is being set. But, you know, it's been from the beginning, as I've called it, uh, uh, an exercise in retrofit, a fait accompli. That's why things have to fall into place. And those who seem not to be towing the line will be shown the door, will be shown that tow the line or find yourselves in very serious problems. And of course, politicians will say there are numerous and multiple exigencies that they have to consider, um, their party loyalty, and so on and so forth. But I would hope that every single legislator in the still of his or her room in the quiet of the night stops and asks themselves whether ultimately what they're doing is for the benefit of Wanjiko or whether they're fulfilling uh, some agenda that has been set before them by their political parties. For sure they have to be aligned, for sure they, has, they have to be loyal, and I'm sure there are consequences therein for those who don't appear to be aligned. But ultimately, Ben, the intolerance is mind-boggling, and I don't think the Building Bridges Initiative should be called the Building Bridges Initiative. We who stand against it or oppose the BBI process, we're derided, we're ridiculed, we are mocked left, right, and center. What happened to the ability to disagree amicably? What happened to that ability to just say, yeah, you know, we're not with you, but we are still trying to live together in a Kenya, a Kenya that is unified. All right. Uh, Senator Omogeni, it is not your house. It was right, the National Assembly, what happened, yeah. but it is your, your party, ODM. What are your thoughts? Uh, first, uh Kitili, I must state that I've known Dr. Honorable Tiende Amolo for a very long time. And I also know uh, TJ Kajuang uh, as a colleague uh, from the League of Fraternity for a long time. And uh, both of them are brilliant lawyers. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, uh, what uh, Tiende Amolo is able to do in, within the Justice Committee, uh, equally TJ Kajuang, uh, can, can also uh, perform uh, uh, to the same uh, standard. Uh, however, I hope uh, that uh, this has got nothing to do with uh, Dr. Tienda Molo's stand on BBI, and I want to confess that uh, 
he was very resourceful when we had the joint sitting of uh, the Committee of Justice, Legal Affairs, National Assembly, and that of the Senate. And the decision that was arrived at, uh, if, if you want to take anything against uh, Otiende Amolo, so you should do the same against Shamala, against myself, and against Muturi Kigan, because it was a collegial decision taken by all members of, of that committee, and we all appended our signatures. Uh, to the uh, committee. So let's, let's give it benefit of doubt that uh, uh, perhaps uh, it is a normal change by, by ODM uh, to uh, do some reshuffle of membership of the committee and they're not uh, really trying to uh, get at uh, Otiende Amolo uh, just because of the stand he has had on Bibia. In fact, if you asked me, uh, Otienda Amola has been very passionate on these issues of, of constituencies, which is very, very understandable, Kitiri, because uh, politics is, is local at the end of the day. Right. And I think he has fought so hard uh, for a constituency that comes from the backyard of, uh, I think, the, is, I don't know what role Honorable Mbadi plays in the National Assembly, whether he's the uh, deputy leader of majority or the whip, I don't know. But he has uh, really agitated for Omar Bay. Uh, to be given the additional constituencies that uh, our report identifies right. as one of the counties that have been unfairly deprived of additional constituencies uh, from the 70 that uh, are proposed to be uh, increased once there is an amendment to Article 89 and uh, 90. So it will be, to me, very unfair if anybody was to, uh, you know, try to hit back at uh, on. Uh, the stand that Otiende Amola has taken, because it is for the benefit of the people of uh, the greater constituency of uh, Luo Nyanza, that is Oma Bay, uh, Nyatike, and part of uh, the, my leader strongholds of Kisi, uh, who have been deprived of uh, additional constituencies arising from this uh, BBI. But having said that, uh, I want to tell him to take it in stride in this turbulent life of politics, there is always the ups and down. I mean, even uh, Honorable Kimunya, who, who read the communication, has gone through a lot. Yes. <laughs> I think uh, there was a motion that was moved uh, against him at one point by Honorable Kalwale. He lost his ministerial seat. He went to Vine Kipipiri, he lost. I think he has just uh, been cleared. He was battling uh, corruption charges in, in court was not holding any position, but now he's, he's up there. So these things happen. Today it's you, uh, tomorrow it's somebody else. Uh, all all right. that which goes around comes back again. So I, I want to tend our model to take it in stride and continue serving uh, the people of Rarieda and uh, doing the best he can uh, to serve uh, the public uh, interest. And I'm sure Kenyans will uh, right. notice and will be rewarded. Bona Senator, the, the thing that uh, uh, Mojima Otienda Molo was very vocal about uh, some of those, the, the 70 new constituencies. I want to get your, your quick thoughts on what, whether you think the distribution has been done in a fair manner and whether you think it is right for some of those, uh, your colleagues uh, in the Senate as well as the National Assembly, uh, to, to try and have this thing uh, opened so that they can discuss some of those things they're they are talking about. They've also raised the issue of the Judiciary Ombudsman. Mm. I think uh, if you ask me, um, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been, I'm a long-standing lawyer, I'm a senior counsel, and I know that parliament is a house of debate, and uh, we will never all uh, agree, there will always be a divergent view. Right. I think people are raising issues with uh, the constituencies. You cannot dismiss them. You had uh, Honorable uh, Senator Wetangula speak today, you had uh, Honorable Professor Sam Ungeri. And actually, Sam Ongeri said that uh, my party leader, Honorable Raira Odinga, when he was, uh, I think, attending the funeral of the late Honorable Oroi Yoka, uh, MP for Bonchari, he assured, uh, you know, the people of Kisi that this matter will be looked into. And that uh, that constituency that the people of Kisi uh, thought had been uh, snatched away from them will uh, be given back to them. Uh, so I think there are valid points they are raising. Uh, in fact, this process uh, did not come from just nowhere. We had invited the uh, Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, who appeared uh, before us, and uh, they tried to, uh, you know, pick 
the, the, the easiest way to identify which constituents ought to have uh, been split into two. And uh, they, they just took population as captured by, by them in all these constituencies. All right. And uh, all right. when they based it on counties, they identified uh, at least four counties that uh, were unfairly left out in uh, getting an, incre an increase of one constituency or, or, or more. Actually, they picked uh, Oma Bay, they picked Kisi, they picked uh, Kitui, they picked uh, Bungoma. So on uh, the facts as they are on the table, those who are agitating that their counties ought to have uh, been given uh, additional constituencies are basing those arguments on facts which are undisputable, which are on the table, and right. which are in the right. report that the two committees tabled before the House. Now, what I may not give answers to is how we are going to find uh, a solution. Because what the committee did is we identified uh, that as an issue that needs to be uh, looked uh, into uh, by the promoters of the bill so that there is fairness, there is justice. Because we do not have uh, powers to propose any amendments under Article 257, we just flagged it as an issue that should be brought to the attention of the House. But we said we cannot provide uh, solutions. If we were able to provide solutions, I can tell you, Kitiri, that we would have uh, looked for a formula of right. uh, addressing All the right. concerns emanating from those uh, you know, four counties. But because our hands are tied under Article 257, there's nothing uh, we could do. All right. I want to, I want to get your, your final remarks, uh, gentlemen and ladies. Um, uh, Mr. let me begin with you. When, when I look at uh, comments by Kenyans watching this show, and, and even before, they seem to be disillusioned. Um, the Speaker of the National Assembly says this bill cannot be amended in Parliament. So they're asking, so then why should Parliament even debate it? So. What next for, mm -hmm. for, for Kenyans and the BBI process? Um, thank you, Ben. The, the, the Holy Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Are people disillusioned? Are people unhappy? Of course they are, not only in Kenya, worldwide. They're in a sense of, um, it, uh, I, the word is, you know, just an inertia. We are in a COVID pandemic. It has affected the economy. It has affected the way we live every single day. So that's a reality. But the reality also is that we have like what, almost a year, or just um, a year and a bit more into the next election. We have to ask ourselves, where are we going, especially against the backdrop of the COVID pandemic and this challenge, not only to us, but the entire world. What is it we want? Where do we want to take ourselves? What are the, co the causes were established? What were the reasons for the cyclical violence? I do not, and I don't like repeating myself. So indeed, yes, um, people are dis uh, upset. People, there is a sense of hopelessness. But in everything, as long as we have life, we are, we, it shall be well. So, and again, we cannot say, and if the entire people were disillusioned, their counties passed it. The counties of the 47 counties, 44 counties passed it. One uh, result was not accepted, I think, because they didn't participate or meet the threshold for public participation. So there is always hope, and we continue to hope. I'm an eternal optimist, so I'm right. not going to be one of these people who say that, you know, the people are disillusioned. Kenyans are not disillusioned. Maybe the ones on social media, the majority of the ones on social media. Right. But generally they're not. That is why they get up. That is why they strive. They, they work very hard and they try their best. All right. Senator Morgani, in your final remarks very quickly, um, the president has mm. called this a constitutional moment. The Speaker of the National Assembly has delivered what some are saying is a, a legacy communication. What should Kenyans expect? I think... Uh, I, I don't know why Kenyans uh, like playing small. As uh, you know, everybody has said, including the speaker, that uh, the people of Kenya have got the final say. It is their vote that will uh, make this to uh, pass or to fail. So they have an opportunity to pass a verdict on, on uh, the promoters. If they are happy with the bill and they vote overwhelming, overwhelmingly for it, then they would have spoken. And uh, that will give answers to all the questions that we have had, whether the Kenyan people really wanted to amend their constitution or not. Really, 
I want the Kenyan people to realize that power is within themselves. It is them to pass the verdict. It is them to send a strong message to us by either passing or rejecting. But our responsibility as leaders is also to uh, really make sure that we do something about the suffering of Kenyans. You know, uh, I've, I've seen what happens in some countries. You know, if you look at uh, countries like uh, Australia, they are really trying to supplement the income of their people because of, of COVID. And I think once uh, we are done with this BBI, we must go back to the drawing board and see how we address the concerns uh, of, of Kenyans, the suffering, the battering on our, our economy. The situation uh, is not really uh, pleasant on, on, on the ground. When you talk to people, you can, you can feel them. You can feel the suffering. You can feel the anger. They are really yearning for answers and solutions from us as leaders. Right. So we, we must uh, do away with this BBI as soon as possible. Let it get out of our hands. Let it go to the people. Let the people cast the vote. We finish. And then we go back to the drawing board to see how we address the problems that will change the lives of the common Mwananchi, the person that we represent in the Senate and in the National Assembly. Thank you, Senator. Terotich, in your final remarks, very quickly, um, it seems like the country is going for a referendum that you and Linda Katiba and those opposed to the VBI uh, uh, do not want. But uh, Senator says Kenyans will have the, the chance to have the final word. What do you tell the Kenyans who may be opposed to the BBI process as yourself, as they go to the polls, if they will go for a vote. You know, Ben, once upon a time, two very powerful men came together and um, initiated a popular process using my money, our taxpayers' money, state resources, and finally have turned around to say that we, the people, will decide whether we want those changes or not. As I say, Ben, so long as we don't have electoral justice, my vote will not count, your vote will not count, whether we stand for or against it. This, uh, the, what my takeaway from, from today's session, watching what happened in Parliament, and I'm keenly looking to see what happens on Thursday, is that there's now the tyranny of the people. That people will decide, the people will decide. 18 million of the people that we are talking about live below the poverty line. Just a couple of days ago, we saw the headlines in Marsabit, the famine. Famine is public policy failure. It's not an act of God. We have had billions of shillings stolen during this COVID period. And with, with, without uh, putting words in Senator Omogeny's mouth, as he said, can we hurry up with this BBI so we can go back to the real business of governing this country? So do forgive me, Senator. But what I'm trying to say is the irony here is we are even seeing our uh, uh, people believe that, that this BBI process is, is extraneous to the real issues that affect and impact the people of Kenya today. People want water, they want affordable uh, fuel, electricity, access to health. We have no oxygen. We're in the middle of a COVID pandemic. These are the things that should stir the hearts of those who we have tasked with the responsibility of, 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 of bearing the duty of, of sustaining we the people of Kenya. So so yes, we the people will decide, but we the people by far do not um, uh, uh, believe, and, and I'm sure there are others who believe it should happen, but by and large, most of us are saying this is not the time for BBI. Let us put the people first, and then everything else will follow. Thank you. Thank ben. you. Thank you, Terorich. Thank you to all my panelists for joining us tonight. Terorich say. Uh, development and humanitarian consultant and a member of the Linda Katiba group that is opposed to the clamor for constitutional change through the BBI uh, process. Uh, Jennifer Shamala, member of parliament, a military member of parliament and a member of the all important Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of the National Assembly. And uh, Senator Okongo Omogeni, senior counsel, chairman of the Senate's uh, Justice, Legal Affairs and Human Rights Commission uh, Committee. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us, for uh, giving us your time tonight here on Newsline. We do appreciate that. Uh, before we leave you here on the program, let's uh, give you a sneak peek of what to expect in tomorrow's uh, newspaper, The Standard. And uh, the headline is uh, what we saw today, what we have been speaking about, the uh, tension in ODM. Another railer ally shone the door. That is a splash on The Standard tomorrow. Uh, Raria, the member of parliament,